Mario Kart 64 is a special game. For some reason, it's full of obscure glitches that happen once in a blue moon and that no one can explain. On February 7, 1999, Greg Ginatenko was playing Royal Raceway Time Trials. He was on an amazing run, close to world record pace, when as he finished the race, his third lap was saved as 0.00 seconds. Today this 23-year-old mystery finally has an explanation. But the discovery that shed light on this freak occurrence is much bigger than that. Weatherton and Forest 64 realized that the future of shortcut time trials could be forever changed when they discovered that pausing breaks Mario Kart 64. Back in 1999, video recordings of video game achievements were exceedingly rare. At the time, Greg Inetenko was not recording his gameplay. By his own description, however, he finished the race as the Beach Staff Ghost was finishing her second lap. He noticed that the race time kept going during the post-race cutscene, at the end of which it finally stopped and his third lap was 0.00. Afterwards, every time he would play the race, his lap times would flash as if he had a new fastest lap, but the lap record would always remain 0.0 seconds. For 15 years, it was generally thought that Peach crossing the line on the same frame might have something to do with it, as there were no other possible explanations that made any sense. But in 2014, Weatherton was testing this theory, and he did not come to a conclusive result. In 2015, Abney managed to force the glitch to occur again using hacks by preventing his character from going into autopilot mode after finishing the race. But it wasn't until late 2021 that the mystery was finally solved by Forest 64. The key insight needed to understand why this glitch happened is that this shortcut strategy ends the race with Lackey 2 dropping the cart on the finish line facing slightly backwards. To understand why this caused a timer glitch, we need to talk about Mario Kart 64's frame rate. Despite having a visual frame rate of 30 frames per second, Mario Kart 64 actually performs a physics update 60 times per second. In other words, for every visual update on the screen, there's one hidden update in between. The game also only accepts controller inputs once per visual frame, so these updates are called input frames, whereas the hidden updates are called lag frames. As it turns out, visual updates and input polling are not the only things that are unique to input frames. There are several other calculations that are only run on those frames and skipped on lag frames. One of these is the lap time calculation. While the fact that the finish line was crossed is indeed measured on lag frames, the actual finish time is only calculated on the first input frame after the line was crossed. This is what causes the timer glitch. In his race, Inetenko crossed the finish line on the lag frame, but he was most likely holding A, so he immediately drove back across the line. On this input frame, he hasn't been dropped on the track yet, and on the next input frame, he's back across the line. Because he never was across the finish line on an input frame, his final time is not calculated. Now as soon as the race is finished, the game takes control of the racer and drives along an automated path. So even if someone were to cross the line for one single lag frame, the game would still immediately take over and cross the line again. As soon as the cart is across the line during an input frame, the final time gets correctly calculated no matter how much after the initial crossing. But here, because of the cart's facing angle, despite the autopilot's best efforts, Inatenko drives off into the water and doesn't cross the line again. Lakitu picks him up from the water and places him back on land, but then, because 7 seconds have passed, the game transitions into the results screen. At this point, the result screen takes the value of the timer despite it never being calculated properly. The race time is therefore 7 seconds too slow, and because no value was written to the lap time, it shows as 0.00 seconds regardless of how long the lap actually was. It even gets saved as the track's fastest lap record. In short, this glitch happens if and only if the cart crosses the finish line during a lag frame, then goes backwards and gets stuck there long enough that for 7 seconds after finishing the race, there's never an input frame where the cart is across the line. The final lap is displayed as 0 seconds, but this is in no way a lap skip. You still have to complete that lap, but its time will be incorrectly displayed. While this glitch originally happened on the Royal Raceway, it's also possible on other courses, including Sherbet Land and DK's Jungle Parkway. The idea is exactly the same here. The cart crosses the line between visual frames and crosses it right back, so the timer never stops. After 7 seconds have elapsed, the result screen takes over without calculating the finish time properly, resulting in a glitched lap time and an incorrect race time. The special properties of lag frames can also be useful in time trials. For example, the save time in one of the most infamous shortcut levels, and a lap time that was previously thought to be maxed, Frap Snowland. But the current fastest strategy in this level involves beginning a new lap out of bounds to be immediately placed in front of the finish line. 
How could it possibly get faster than that? Well, it's simple, just like that. Observant viewers may have noticed that Lakitu places Toad a little closer to the finish line than before. When you go out of bounds, Lakitu places you back on the track based on the path marker that you were last on. The current fastest strategy sets the final marker of the lap as the current marker before doing the shortcut. The next marker is normally impossible to reach without triggering the next lap. However, while path markers are updated even during lag frames, a lap can only be started on an input frame. By crossing the finish line during a lag frame and curving back behind the line and off the track on the following input frame, Toad goes to lap 2 and back to lap 1, so lap 2 is technically never started. From there, upon executing the shortcut, Lakitu places you closer to the line and you can save a tenth of a second. The distinction between input frames and lag frames turns out to have ramifications that run much deeper than was previously thought. It was already known that lag frames are fundamentally different. After all, this is the basis of the half clip allowing for extremely short laps on Luigi Raceway. The game only checks if the cart is out of bounds during input frames. If the cart rams into the wall and ends up on the other side for just one lag frame, the lap section is updated to further down the track, but the cart is not detected as out of bounds until the next input frame. However, on that next frame, the cart is already back in bounds and completes the lap in 0.01 to 0.03 seconds. And this is where pausing comes into play. The new discovery is that pausing causes an input frame to behave in some regards like a lag frame. The game still visually updates and pulls for input, but out-of-bounds detection and lap time calculations are not run on the frame the game is paused. The implications of this are massive. If you pause the game on the right frame, you can be out-of-bounds without the game detecting that you are. But before everyone goes crazy, let me share the bad news. Once you unpause the game, there's one frame where you can't pause the game again, and on that frame, you will be detected as being out of bounds. So effectively, instead of being able to spend one lag frame out of bounds undetected, you can now spend one lag frame, one paused input frame, and one additional lag frame out of bounds. That is at least until you plug in a second controller. As it turns out, one player can't pause the game on every frame, but two players can alternate their pauses, effectively pausing on every frame. Using this method, it is in fact possible to spend every input frame paused and therefore delay the out-of-bounds detection indefinitely. That's right, you can drive out-of-bounds for as long as you want, so long as two players alternate to pause the game on every frame. This also allows for brand new shortcuts that spend a large amount of time out-of-bounds, which wouldn't be possible otherwise. For example, Frap Snowland 3 lap in 11.79, or DK's Jungle Parkway Fast lap in 1.58 seconds. While pausing to prevent out-of-bounds detection can be done in two-player mode, it's been shown to be of relatively little use in time trials since it only adds a tiny bit of time out-of-bounds. But time trial ghosts have a little trick up their sleeves that's been obscure knowledge for years. The player's ghost is considered as a second player. Although the second controller isn't able to control the ghost in any way, for some reason, it can still be used to pause the game. Similarly, the third controller can be used to pause the game if a staff ghost is on the track. You might see where I'm going here. Sadly, ghost data is incompatible with a few things in the game, including being picked up by Lakitu, collisions with objects, and also pausing. As soon as the game is paused, the race data can no longer be saved, and any ghost currently on the track disappears. As a result, the game can be paused on two consecutive frames once and only once, and only as the first pause in the run. When the game has been paused once, only the first player can pause from now on. Despite these restrictions, it is now technically possible to spend five consecutive physics updates out of bounds without being detected as such if a ghost is on the track. What does that mean? The new improvement on the previously thought to be maxed Frap Snowland shortcut, mere days after its discovery, is already outdated. 4.24 is nowhere near the fastest possible lap on this track. This is Frap Snowland fast lap in 1.10 seconds. The best part about this shortcut strategy is that it's still nowhere near the fastest possible way to finish a lap. Don't believe me? How about 0.33 seconds? Hey, you want to know the best part about this lap? It's not even the fastest. Now, don't blink. Okay, this time, this is the fastest lap on Frap Snowland. But how is a 0.00 second lap possible without the timer glitch? Let's break it down frame by frame. 
This will be demonstrated using a hack that displays lag frames, but lag frames will be black and white to tell them apart from input frames. Here's an overhead view of the area. The finish line plane is the black line and the colored zones are out of bounds. The minimum requirement for the lap to count is to be in front of the line in the red zone, then behind the line in the blue zone and in front of the line in the red zone again. First, Toad drives into out of bounds, parallel to but ever so slightly behind the finish line. After one lag frame out of bounds, the ghost is used to pause on this frame. Then, on the next lag frame, Toad crosses the line, starting a new lap. Despite Toad being in lap 3 now, the game doesn't actually start the lap until the next input frame. On that frame, player 1 pauses the game this time. Toad is back behind the line, but he's now in the blue zone. So instead of going back to lap 2 and cancelling the start of lap 3, he makes forward progress and reaches the end of lap 3. On the next lag frame, he crosses the line into the red zone, finishing the race. Finally, the input frame after is when the race actually ends. Because Toad spends a single input frame in the lap, this should be saved as a 0.02 second lap. But if out of bounds detection was the only thing that pausing disabled, this would be a boring video. Like I said before, pausing also disables the lap time calculation that's only run on input frames. Here, because the game is paused during input frames, as the second lap is completed, the game is unable to calculate its time. And when it's finally able to do so, the race is already over. At this point, the third lap's finished data overwrites the second lap's, and so the second lap time is calculated using the third lap's finish, causing the game to add up both lap times as the second lap, and giving 0.0, .0 seconds to the third lap. The real lap times here were 41.23 and 0.02, but it gets displayed as 41.25 and 0. Nonetheless, it is still possible to do a variant of this lap that does get saved as 0.01 seconds. Also, while this is the fastest possible single lap, the strategy used in the 1.10 lap would be faster for the full track. Let's go back to Luigi Raceway, where we can improve the fast lap here as well. The current fastest known time is a 0.01 lap, so with a well-timed pause, this can be brought down to zero. But is it really a zero second lap? No. The lap actually lasted 0.01 seconds, but it was incorrectly saved as 0.00. The pause simply forces two laps to end on the same input frame, which defaults the last one to zero seconds as a result. And now, let's get crazy for a bit. Considering that lap times only get calculated on unpaused input frames, what if we use two players and play the whole race while pausing on every frame? You guessed it, 0.00 times. You can do this on any track in the game so long as the pauses are frame perfect throughout the whole race. There's one more way pausing influences the game. In my previous video, Mumu Farm was left in a state where a shortcut was almost possible, but ultimately stunted by the Lakitu effect being slightly too short. The Lakitu effect is a period of roughly 1.6 seconds, or 50 input frames, where Lakitu is still loaded after dropping you on the track. During that short time, he can't come pick you up again, so you can go out of bounds without being stopped. But for some reason, pausing freezes Lakitu for one frame, causing him to stay loaded for 1 60th of a second longer. This is how the potency of pausing was discovered in the first place. Weatherton found out that pausing near the end of a shortcut attempt let him drive one more frame than if he didn't. When Forrest heard the news, he realized that pausing repeatedly could extend the effect even further. Therefore, one could pause 10, even 20 times after being dropped by Lakitu and extend the grace period by almost half a second. This is enough to make a Mumu Farm shortcut possible. However, this shortcut uses two mushrooms at minimum, and it requires wasting multiple seconds going out of bounds in the previous lap. As a result, and this is a first in Mario Kart 64 history, this shortcut is only useful for fast lap and cannot be used to save time in three lap runs. Also, the shortcut is theoretically possible the other way around, but again, because it requires two mushrooms, there just aren't enough mushrooms in time trials to make this a viable strategy. Of course, as new strategies are developed, this could change in the next few months. Using two players though, it's possible to get much crazier with the Mumu Farm shortcuts. There, a three lap shortcut time would be possible. The Lakitu effect extension also has other uses, such as good old Fraps No Land. Now, I know what you're thinking, Fraps No Land is already dead. Well, the thing is, while the insane laps we just saw are technically possible, most of them are likely TAS only. The Lakitu effect extension could be used as a means to get a time faster than 4.33 without the incredibly precise frame-perfect driving the faster laps require. 
For example, this 4.14 lap. Here, just a few pauses extend the Lakitu effect enough to turn around in the out-of-bounds area without being stopped. There is one important caveat to these new discoveries that needs discussing. As of right now, pausing the game during time trials has been banned since 2020. The reasoning is that pausing cannot be used to help set up a trick without losing in-game time. These new discoveries all involve pausing, and therefore, under the current ruling, would be disallowed for time trials competition. However, there's an interesting point to consider. While historically the only contentious uses for pausing were to help setting up something precise or to take a break mid-run, this is different. In the case of pausing to extend the Lakitu effect or to prevent out-of-bounds detection, the act of pausing itself has a direct impact on the gameplay and its use requires extreme precision and skill. It's also only useful in very specific scenarios that are easily defined and recognizable. Of course, in the case of pausing to generate 0.00 second laps that aren't really 0 seconds, a much different argument can be made. In that case, it was demonstrated using Memory Watch that a 0 second lap is purely a display error and the actual lap time is unaffected but unverifiable without access to the game's memory. I'm typically not one to make judgement calls in my videos. The Mario Kart 64 community will deliberate on this new discovery and aside from presenting the facts, I have no place in those discussions. As for tool-assisted runs of the game, pausing will be considered a valid option to enable shortcuts and it will of course be kept at a strict minimum required to optimize gameplay. As always, I've left the most game-breaking thing for the end. The single biggest revolution in the game's history. The most prestigious speedrunning category in the game, perhaps ever, is going to be forever changed. You guessed it, I'm talking about all trees. All trees consist of destroying every tree in the game using a star. A very simple premise, a very complex problem. Of the 338 trees in the game, only 307 of them are in bounds. So the category had to limit itself to those trees, leaving all the other ones intact. Not anymore. With two-player pausing, it is now technically possible to destroy every single tree in the game with a star, no exceptions. This and only this is why pausing breaks Mario Kart 64.